Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to cover chapter 5, uh, Access to Health, uh, Planning a Healthy Diet. Our learning objectives for today will be to understand the basics of healthy eating, to learn about diet planning, uh, and to plan and learn how to read food labels. So why should you care? Uh, nutritional choices the choices that you make at college um, will have immediate effects uh, and they can have lasting effects on your health. Um, there are many, many studies that have shown that chronic diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, um, many types of cancer can be prevented through the choices you make, the nutritional choices that you make. So what is the, the science of nutrition? The science of nutrition um, it investigates the role of nutrition in maintaining health and preventing or treating chronic disease. Nutrition can also treat chronic disease. So what are some of the areas of science that are involved in nutrition? Um, it's based on many facets of science, including sociology. Um, that's how people choose foods. Public health. Uh, nutrient excesses and nutrient deficiencies both impact the health of uh, the public. Biology, uh, how your body processes nutrients, that's specific to you, although that can be uh, altered and modified somewhat through some healthy choices. Biochemistry, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the biochemistry of nutrients. Um, physiology, how the body responds to those nutrients. Um, of course, we're all aware of sugar crashes after we have that sugar high. And uh, genomics, uh, we, are, we all are uh, combined genes and genetics uh, and how we respond to nutrients differs from person to person. Some people uh, have a very sweet tooth, I do for example, uh, and that's mostly affected by my genes. However, you can trump that by making um, healthy choices. Uh, and lastly, medicine. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, disease nutrition spiral uh, and how uh, nutrition can get out of control uh, in individuals that are suffering from certain diseases. So how do people choose the foods that they eat? Take a moment to think about that. There are a large number of ways that we choose the foods that we eat. Uh, I want to go through them here uh, and illustrate for you which ones are more important, I think. Uh, one is preference, uh, and that may be largely driven by some genetics. Uh, what are the foods that you prefer? Um, sometimes it's driven by uh, the foods that you grew up with. Uh, there are social influences. Um, we tend to eat the same sorts of foods as others around us. Um, there are ethnic and regional choices. Uh, I think ethnic foods are the best place to start uh, designing your personalized healthy diet. Some choices uh, for food are religious-based or value-based. Uh, for example, vegetarians or vegans don't eat meat. Uh, price and availability. This is a huge one for uh, college students. Uh, it is possible to eat a healthy diet uh, on a budget. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, emotional eating. Um, most of us have some sort of connection to food that's emotional. Uh, for example, when I'm feeling a little down, I love to reach for a bar of chocolate. That's my guilty pleasure. Um, and associative eating uh, is another way that we make our choices. Uh, for example, if you go to a baseball game, you probably associate going to a baseball game with eating a hot dog. That's associating the location with the kind of food that you might eat at that location. And last, appetite, which I think is one of the least, um, one of the smallest drivers for our food choices. Um, I think we're driven much more by habit, preference, um, and social and uh, social factors uh, than, than appetite per se. So food choices have uh, evolved uh, in the human species since hunter-gatherer times. Uh, in hunter-gatherer times, most of the foods that we ate did not contain sugar. Um, and that differs from, from nowadays. Even in agricultural 
uh, times peasant agricultural, um, times when agriculture was just beginning um, in the human species, uh, there were very few sugars available uh, to humans. Now that is different in modern society. In modern society there is a lot of sugar available and indeed a lot of fat. Um, most of the, uh, the meats that were eaten by hunter-gatherers and peasant agriculturalists were quite lean. Um, but nowadays the uh, meats that are available are quite fatty. So fat and sugar are two of the biggest changes of the human diet. Uh, and probably two of the biggest problems for uh, modern society in terms of nutrition. So I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about the quality of data. Um, there are a lot of opinions about nutrition out there, but uh, the, the, uh, the data is what we're going to talk about in this course. So here is an example of a very large study. This is a meta-analysis that was published in the Lancet Journal. Uh, taking a look at the uh, hazard ratio on the left side for death, mortality, versus the uh, energy from carbohydrate intake of uh, thousands of people. And what you can see from this graph is a, is a U-shaped association between ingestion of carbohydrate and death mortality, all-cause mortality. Um, that tells us something. Uh, it tells us that low carbohydrate intakes, for example, a keto diet, are dangerous um, and result in high rates of death. And in fact, high carbohydrate diets, diets filled with simple sugars or indeed added sugars, um, are also dangerous. Uh, so carbohydrate intakes should lie somewhere in the middle. And it's this kind of study um, that with scientific support that we'll be talking about for nutrition um, in this course. So what do we need from foods? We need energy and we need nutrients. Nutrients being the building blocks to rebuild the human body. So let's first of all talk about energy. Energy is measured in nutrition in kilocalories. Um, sometimes that's referred to as calories uh, that term is interchangeable uh, in the common literature. Uh, energy is, in fact, the capacity to do work, things like lift or run or uh, jump. Now, there are three energy-containing um, nutrients, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about those uh, as we go forward. So the nutrients that provide energy, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Um, in terms of energy provided by each of these, carbohydrate provides four kilocalories per gram. So for every gram, which is about the size of um, carbohydrate, you'll get four kilocalories of energy. For fat, that's nine kilocalories. That means the same amount of fat provides more than double the energy of carbohydrates. And proteins are very similar in terms of the amount of energy they provide to carbohydrates. Now, you should be aware, uh, as an aside, that alcohol has calories. Um, and alcohol's calories are a little bit unusual. They sit between carbohydrate calories and fat calories at 7 kilocalories per gram. So essentially, you can think of fat either as a carbohydrate or as a fat. I'd urge you to think of alcohol consumption it really as a fat consumption. It's um, closer in terms of its metabolism to fat um, metabolism than it is to carbohydrate metabolism. Okay, looking at a kilocalorie, how much, do, do, uh, how much energy does a human being need for one day? Um, the approximation that the USDA uses is that an average human being requires around about 2,000 calories or 2,000 kilocalories per day. Uh, when you do the math behind that, look at converting a calorie into joules and a joule, which is a unit of energy that can be measured as joules per second, which is watts, and you take a look at light bulbs, which are measured as in watts, um, you understand that a human being um, essentially 
is the equivalent, requires the equivalent of two 60 watt light bulbs um, for an entire day's energy. Okay, so earlier I mentioned the um, disease nutrition spiral and how medicine is involved with, uh, with nutrition. I just want you to be aware as we delve into this that um, malnutrition or not getting enough kilocalories, not getting enough vitamins and minerals um, can be the result of disease, um, infections, any kind of chronic disease or other illness uh, can drive malnutrition. When a person is malnourished, uh, that will alter their metabolism and oftentimes that results in a loss of appetite. Uh, along with this uh, malnutrition and loss of appetite comes impaired nutritional status. Maybe you don't have enough vitamin B, maybe you don't have enough vitamin C. Uh, that impaired nutritional status uh, will further weaken uh, the human body, weaken your immunity, worsening disease. Um, so you can see how one can spiral out of control, disease causing poor nutrition, causing worsening disease, causing worsening nutrition, and so on and so forth. So we want to avoid the disease nutrition spiral. Um, there's another side of this, uh, which is under eating uh, and eating disorders. People who have eating disorders can also spiral out of control as well by, by becoming malnourished, uh, having impaired nutrition status, weakened immunity, uh, increased risk of disease, and, and then further deterioration in nutritional status. Under eating, um, eating disorders, very serious conditions that should get treated immediately. Um, contact me if you know of anybody who is suffering from uh, an eating disorder and let's get them help straight away. Okay, so what does the USDA say about a uh, healthy diet? Um, there are new guidelines, 20 to 25 uh, dietary guidelines for Americans. Um, these focus on uh, how to prevent chronic diseases. Um, why is that? Uh, the reason is most people uh, at a certain point in their life are going to become sick with a chronic disease. Those chronic diseases are cardiovascular disease, strokes and heart attacks, diabetes, and cancers. All three can be prevented through healthy choices. And the USDA puts out a guideline which is designed to help people uh, prevent those chronic diseases. So this is quite different from fad diets that you'll see in magazines or on YouTube or TikTok or some other social media platform. This is scientifically proven uh, scientifically studied uh, dietary guidelines uh, that experts have reviewed, uh, gone over, and presented. Um, this is the best way for you to avoid long-term chronic disease. So what is healthy eating? Healthy eating is selecting from the tens of thousands of foods that are available um, a nutritionally balanced diet. Pretty simple. Um, that diet has to meet your nutrient and your energy needs. What, what a healthy diet is not are these sorts of fad diets that you see illustrated on this slide. Um, the paleo diet is a diet that tells you to avoid grains, a diet that tells you to avoid sugars. The South Beach diet has some weird uh, diet restriction uh, in the first few weeks with avoiding uh, sugars altogether and refined carbohydrates and then reintroducing good carbs. Um, the keto diet tells people to avoid all carbohydrates, um, carbohydrates altogether. Um, all of these things have one factor in common. And the one factor that they have in common is they tell you to avoid food. The USDA does not tell you to avoid foods. There are some foods that the USDA recommends moderating. 